People have always been enchanted with the idea of leaving the bondage of the Earth's gravity and journeying to some place beyond. According to the Old Testament, a chariot of fire carried the prophet Elijah up into heaven. In 1694, astronomer Johannes Kepler considered a journey to the moon in his work Somnium. And Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote many fantasies that took place on Mars. The human heart longs for expanded horizons, to see new things, and to discover that in this frighteningly vast universe, we are not alone. For most of history, such dreams were the stuff of myth and fantasy. People had no idea of the kind of medium they would have to go through to reach the planets or stars. They didn't know how far they would have to travel, and they were not sure what they would find if somehow they did get there. Even after people learned to make machines which could fly, travel into space was prevented by the speeds necessary to leave the surface of the Earth. Escape velocity, as it is called, is about 25,000 miles an hour. But breakthroughs did come as new rockets were built. It is an ironic note in history that the technology necessary for human beings to realize the dream of spaceflight was developed in the nightmare of war. At the beginning of World War II, Adolf Hitler commanded the scientific community in Germany to develop rockets capable of delivering devastating blows to his enemies. The result was the infamous V-2 rocket, used by Hitler to rain destruction upon London. But for all its wicked past, the V-2 is considered the grandfather of today's modern launch vehicles. By the end of World War II, developing missile technology made the idea of reaching into space a realistic one. Scientists saw how the rockets of war might be redesigned to deliver payloads, and perhaps even men, into orbit. The Soviet Union got there first. In 1957, they launched the first artificial satellite called Sputnik into orbit around the Earth. Russia's successful launch threw down the gauntlet to the United States of America. In 1961, President John Kennedy responded with a challenge of his own to put a man on the moon before the decade was out. Now it is time to take longer strides time for a great new American enterprise, time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. Kennedy's call to action put space exploration among the top priorities in both countries. As a result, we sent probes such as Ranger, Surveyor, and Lunar Orbiter to our first goal, the Moon. But we also sent other probes to places people might like to visit in the more distant future. These devices have names which are now famous. Mariner, Pioneer, Viking, Venera, and of course Voyager. Combined, these probes have visited and collected data on every planet in the solar system, with the exception of distant Pluto. During this time of intense exploration, many people felt our species was finally coming of age, leaving the planet and would soon be off to the stars. It was a premature hope, for these people didn't fully appreciate how difficult interstellar travel is. To understand the enormity of the task, we might compare a trip to Mars with one to Alpha Centauri. Mars is about 50 million miles away at its closest approach to Earth. What would it take to send an expedition to Mars? Well, first it takes timing. Earth and Mars align for an optimal launch only once every two years. This direct insertion, as it's called, is the most economical and least risky for the astronauts. Using the best rocket technology we already have, the trip to the Red Planet would take about six months. Once there, the astronauts would have to return immediately or wait two years for the next alignment of the planets. The logistics of such a trip are mind-boggling. 
stockpiles of supplies would have to be sent ahead of the manned expedition and placed on the planet for the crew's arrival. Still, the mission is within our grasp. As they say, we have the technology. Scientists have developed several scenarios for a manned mission to Mars, and humans may well set foot on the planet in your lifetime. To get back to our comparison, the Alpha Centauri system is a whopping 25 trillion miles distant. In other words, about 500,000 times further than a trip to Mars. To give a sense of the distance, we can look at the speediest craft we have made to date, Helios. Launched by Germany at uh, 32 miles per second, it holds the record. If it had a track that would hold it to the ground, it would zip around the Earth in 12 and a half minutes. At such a huge speed, you'd think that it would reach the nearest star in short time, but it would actually take a spacecraft traveling that fast more than 24,000 years to reach the Centauri system. This is an immense distance, and remember, Alpha Centauri is our nearest stellar neighbor, the adjoining cosmic property, you might say. If we cannot reach it, we certainly cannot reach other stars. It obviously makes Mars seem close. So how can we think about a trip that is a half million times greater in distance, one that would take centuries at the speed of our fastest spacecraft? Well, there are people who dream about such trips and try to turn them into reality. These visionaries have devised a number of different methods which have technological possibilities. We'll return to the practical guide to the universe on the Learning Channel. Before nightfall, 40,000 children will die from hunger and disease. Monday at 8.30 on the Learning Channel. We now return to the practical guide to the universe on the Learning Channel. The first problem these visionaries have to tackle is that of acceleration. To reach the nearest stars in a reasonable time frame, we need to achieve not just speed, but continually increasing speeds, otherwise known as acceleration. Some people argue that the ideal acceleration would be 1g, 32 feet per second squared. When accelerating at 1g, the crew would have the sensation of weight, just as on the surface of the Earth. Conveniently enough, 1g represents enough acceleration to get us to the nearest stars in a reasonable amount of time. An acceleration of 1g will allow us to reach the near stars, but is it realistic? Can we create a drive that powerful? If we look at the technology that is available now, we see that the best chemical rockets are woefully inadequate for the job. Some have envisioned using a kind of power already available here on Earth, nuclear fission reactors like the ones used to power nuclear submarines and light our cities. A fission-driven craft might eventually reach a nearby star, but several generations of crew would have lived and died on board before arriving. You see, with such a drive, a trip to the Centauri system would take about 400 years. It would need a reactor large enough to power a city, and even with all that power, it would still only attain a little over 1% of the speed of light. Others have proposed a spacecraft driven by nuclear fusion rather than fission, in effect harnessing the power of the hydrogen bomb. In fact, scientists have already designed such an explosive drive system, on the drawing board at least. They called it Orion. In theory, we already have the know-how to design this bomb-driven spacecraft. Other more exotic fuels remain beyond our technology, yet continue to tantalize the star travel visionaries. Antimatter is one example. Physicists have discovered there is a whole class of matter that is the mirror image of normal matter that we are familiar with. This matter has the same weight as ordinary matter, but 
the opposite spin and electrical charge. When matter and antimatter come together, they destroy each other and release a burst of pure energy. We've already been able to manufacture antimatter in particle accelerators, but only at a huge cost